everyone. I'm going to show you 20 things you must do after installing Debian 12 Bookworm. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro fast. Number 1. Enable sudo access. After installing Debian 12, you will realize that your user account does not have sudo access. If you are new to Linux and have no idea about the power of sudo, then let me clear it for you. The sudo command gives regular users access to administrator-like powers more like run as administrator option in Windows. The sudo is not provided by Debian because it doesn't provide the option of granting sudo access to user accounts at the time of installation. So, if you even try to run any sudo command, this will happen to you. Now to add the user or to enable the sudo access, you need to switch to the root user by running the su space hyphen command and providing your Debian password. After that, open the sudoers file as a default text editor by executing the vi sudo command. Once opened, insert the command username space all equal to all colon all space all. Remember to modify the username with your system username which is qam in my case, and save the file. Now let's open a new terminal and execute a random sudo command to ensure that the access is granted or not. The working of the executed command confirms that you have successfully enabled the sudo command for the current user. To run everything seamlessly and to work on the latest available versions provided by the Linux distributions like Debian 12, it is essential to always install the latest version, and it also helps in resolving common bugs. We can do this using the GUI and CLI approach. For GUI, open the software application and open the update tab. There you'll see a list of pending updates, select the one you want to update, hit the restart and update button, and confirm the pop-up box. I want to perform updates via the CLI approach, so I'll click cancel and open the terminal. In the terminal, start by executing the sudo apt update, which refreshes the package lists, ensuring that Debian knows about the latest versions of packages available. After that, execute the sudo apt upgrade command to install the latest versions of all packages on your system. To confirm the upgrade process, press the Y characters and hit Enter. After hitting, the upgrade process for installed packages gets started automatically. Congrats! You now have an updated Debian 12 bookworm system along with the latest software versions. It's an evolutionary era and everything in this era is dependent on the network or we can say internet. So it is very important to ensure that you have internet access to your system and you can check it by executing the IP space A command. This command provides network-related information like internet status or the assigned IP address on your system. In case you're not familiar with command stuff, then open the network option and hit the settings symbol button to get the network details in GUI format. That's it. In case you prefer to set a static IP address for your network instead of automatic DHCP configured, then launch the network manager from the terminal by running the NMTUI command. From the Network Manager TU, I select the Edit A Connection option, and from the Retrieved Connections, select the one that you desire to modify. The Edit Connection box appears from there, set the IPv4 configuration to Manual, and provide the values for IP address and DNS servers fields if not provided. Then save the changes by hitting the OK button. Now, hit the Activate a Connection option to apply the change and start the service. For the GUI approach, Open the network section from the settings and hit the setting symbol next to the connected network name. Now select the IPv4 tab from the new dialog box and select the manual option. After that, provide the values for the IP address, netmask, and gateway fields. This IP address is going to be set as a static IP address. Now refresh the internet, move over the terminal and execute the pinggoogle.com to confirm that the IP address is set statically just like done previously by checking the numbers of lost packets. Hurrah! You have successfully configured the network and set the static IP address. Time and date are no doubt essential components of the system and ensure that the system time matches with the correct ones. You can retrieve the time by executing the date command. And to get information about both date and time along with other properties like time zone, then run the time date CTL status command. Now let's install the crony package by executing the sudo apt install crony command. This package allows us to configure the time or set NTP synchronization according to our requirements. 
After installation, execute the sudo system ctl start crony and sudo system ctl enable crony commands to start and enable the crony package services. Now to custom define the date, execute the $timeDate ctl list hyphen timezones command. This displays the available time zones from where you can pick one. More time zones can also be found by hitting the enter key. Now set the time zone on your system. Using the sudo time date CTL set time zone Africa Nairobi hyphen hyphen adjust hyphen system hyphen clock command. Then execute the sudo time date CTL set hyphen NTP yes command to enable and start the first network synchronization service. Lastly, execute time date CTL command to confirm whether the modification of a time zone is applied or not. Number five, configure power management. Let's proceed the journey by entering into the power management stuff to optimize your system for better power consumption. Initially, install the TLP package by executing the sudo apt install TLP command because it provides a fantastic power management tool for Debian 12. After the completion of the installation process, start the installed package by executing the sudo TLP start command, and it will automatically apply the recommended power saving settings suitable for your system. To dive in deeper and want to play with the advanced settings, execute the sudo nano etc tlp.conf command. Here, you can tweak the parameters to match your hardware and preferences. For instance, I am enabling the CPU underscore boost underscore on underscore AC service. Now restart the TLP service via the sudo TLP start command. And as you can see, that package is started with the specified changes. Everyone is in a hurry, so why not make our Debian 12 also fast? If we are on the same page, then let's optimize the Debian 12 boot time to meet our standard. First, execute the systemd analyze command to check the current boot time. Now, to identify which services are the cause for slow boot time or consuming more time to load, execute the systemd analyze blame command. As a result, the list of services that are currently running and taking a significant amount of time is displayed. If you want to disable some unrequired services at the startup time, then utilize the sudo system ctl disable service name command. For instance, the modified version of the command to disable the random cups.service service appears on the screen as. This command now prevents the targeted cups service from executing at boot time. As an extra mile, you can mask the service by running the sudo system ettl mask service name command. This masking prevents the service from being started manually or by other services. Once you've made your changes, Reboot your system and confirm the modification using the systemd analyze command. Congrats, buddy! You've optimized your Debian 12 bookworm system for a faster boot. Enjoy the Swift startup. Are you bored with configuring the Debian 12 system? Let's install some cool applications to make your journey with Debian 12 enjoyable. Start by opening the terminal, then use the apt package manager for installing applications. Then. Run the sudo apt install vim command to install the powerful vim text editor. As an alternative to vim, execute the sudo apt install nano command to install the nano text editor, which is more beginner friendly. Just in case you feel like a coding session, run the sudo apt install build hyphen essential command to install the build essential toolkit. It provides compilers and essential build tools, which are essential for coding. For verification purposes, execute the dpkg hyphen l command to find out whether the specific package is installed or not. Like we check the existence of a nano package. You can always customize the installed application as per requirements. So try new experiences and feel free to explore the vast Debian repositories for more gems. Media has the most important place in everyone's hearts, which leads to the importance of tools that can be used to play these media files. Two media players that are mostly used for this purpose are the VLC and M player. To install the VLC media player, run the sudo apt install VLC command. This is a versatile multimedia player that supports various formats and it is the most popular player among users. Now, execute the sudo apt install mplayer command to install the mplayer media player on Debian 12. Let's confirm the installation of both software by searching the package name in the search bar or executing the dpkg l command. The requirements are never fulfilled from single software and there is always a need to add additional software and firmware. In case you are stuck in the same situation, then let me get you rescued because now we are going to enable the helper services for you, namely Contrib and Non-Free. These repositories introduce software that may not be fully open source or free. Open the sources list file, which controls package sources for Debian, 
using the sudo nano etc app sources list command. This requires administrator privileges, so enter your password when prompted. Within the file, you'll find multiple lines starting with deb or debsrc, each representing a Debian repository. Locate the lines corresponding to the repository you want to enable contrib and non-free for. For example, if you want them for bookworm main, look for the illustrated lines. Once you've found the relevant lines, simply add the words contrib non-free with spaces after main on each line, just like I have done with the bookworm main repository. Next, run sudo apt update in your terminal to update the package lists, including the newly enabled repositories. Remember, this disables the CD-ROM repositories, so ensure you have other active sources for software updates. Be mindful of security implications when tinkering with repositories. Now go forth and conquer your Debian adventures. Frustrated by CD-ROM repository errors in Debian 12, Bookworm? These CD-ROM related errors appear because the CD-ROM repository does not have a release file. However, you can silence these messages by opening the sources list file for editing using the sudo nano etc apt sources list. Inside this file, find lines starting with cdrom and add a hash symbol at the beginning of each found line to mute them. That's it. Save the changes. No more error noise when you update packages. Tired of the plain old black and white terminal? Let's unleash your inner designer and personalize your environment with some eye-catching colors. Let's explore multiple sections of the terminal and customize their appearance, transforming it into a haven for your taste. Start by opening the terminal and opening the Preferences window by right-clicking on the terminal. In this window, there are multiple tabs, namely Text, Colors, Commands, and Compatibility. You interact with options provided by each tab to perform desired modifications. For instance, I'm enabling the cursor and modifying the background color for highlight and the whole terminal screen. The OpenSSH server is a suite of secure networking utilities that uses the Secure Shell SSH protocol. It is an open source implementation of the SSH protocol. By default, SSH is not enabled on Debian 12 after the installation. However, let's install OpenSSH using the sudo apt install OpenSSH server command. Once installed, execute the sudo systemctl start ssh and sudo systemctl enable ssh command to ensure start and enable the ssh server services. As a verification, retrieve the status of an ssh service by executing the systemctl status ssh command. Now make the ssh allowed by the ufw firewall service by running the sudo ufw allow ssh command. Now retrieve the status of a firewall by executing the sudo ufw status verbose. The uncomplicated firewall, ufw, is a program to manage the netfilter firewall designed to be easy to use. This powerful tool acts as a vigilant gatekeeper, filtering unwanted connections and shielding your digital space from potential threats. It improves the security of the system and empowers you to build a secure online fortress with ease. The UFW firewall is installed by executing the sudo apt install UFWY command. Now enable this firewall by running the $sudo UFW enable command. The command may disrupt existing SSH connections. After that, execute the sudo UFW default deny incoming command to deny all incoming traffic. Also, run the sudo UFW allow SSH command to allow the incoming traffic from SSH or any other desired service as per requirements. With the help of genome tweaks, the customization of the desktop gets too easy. It's a fantastic way to make your desktop truly yours. Let's get started. To install GNOME tweaks, open the terminal and run the sudo apt install gnome-tweaks command. Once the installation is complete, launch the gnome tweaks either by searching for it in your applications or by typing the gnome-tweaks in the terminal. After that, hit the enter key and the gnome tweaks window will appear from where various aspects of your desktop including themes, icons, fonts, and more can be customized. Explore the available options and have fun tweaking your GNOME desktop to match your style and preferences. A Debian 12 supports several desktop environments and allows you to add as many desktops as you want. In addition, you can then tweak the desktop environment as desired. For GNOME, the GNOME tweak tool makes it easier to change themes, fonts, and window behaviors on Debian 12. The tweak tools can be launched from the app menu as shown. Once launched, you can make the desired adjustments to the system. For my case, I have added the minimize and maximize buttons to my windows and modified their placement. 
Moreover, you can also toggle between the dark and light modes as per your requirements. Play with the provided options as per your desire. To add functionality or improve the appearance of the desktop, one can enable the GNOME Shell extensions. As from its name, it allows the users to add or delete GNOME extensions like checking spelling errors, downloading movies, blocking ads, launching applications, and many more. The user needs to execute the sudo apt install gnome hyphen shell hyphen extension hyphen manager hyphen y command to enable and install the gnome extensions. Once the installation is complete, launch the extension manager from the app menu. After that, you can enable desired extensions like I am enabling the open weather gnome extension. The snap is a modern and universal package manager that makes it easier to install packages on any Linux system. Snap also enables secure distribution of the latest apps and utilities for the cloud, servers, desktops, and the Internet of Things. To enable the Snap Package Manager, start by executing the sudo apt install snapd command to install it on Debian 12. Once installed, run the sudo system ctl enable hyphen hyphen now snapd command to ensure that it is started and enabled. Congrats! You have successfully enabled the Snap Package Manager and now you can proceed and install distribution-independent packages on Debian 12. Google Chrome does not require any definition as it is the most popular and widely used browser and like Windows, it is not by default installed on Debian 12. However, if you desire to work on Google Chrome then, we can bring it on Debian and for this purpose, we will use apt repositories. So let's start. Begin by adding a signing key for Google software repositories to Debian 12 by executing the displayed curl command. Then, add Google Chrome's repository on your Debian-based system, Debian 12, using the echo command after entering the GPG key as shown on the screen. Update the system to inherit the recently added repositories using the sudo apt update command, and install Google Chrome using the sudo apt install google chrome stable y command. Once complete, launch it from the app menu for verification purposes and enjoy easy net surfing. Give your inbox the makeover it deserves with the powerful yet user-friendly Thunderbird on your Debian 12 machine. The Thunderbird is a free open source email, newsfeed, chat, and calendaring client. It manages multiple email accounts and newsfeeds for single users. First, refresh the system repositories by running the sudo apt update command. Then execute the sudo apt install Thunderbird command to install Thunderbird. Once installed, Launch the Thunderbird by opening the application menu and searching for Thunderbird. Else, type Thunderbird on the console. After opening, click on Email under Create a New Account and enter your name, email address, and password. Once entered, click Continue. After providing values, the Thunderbird automatically configures the email settings. It asks for your email credentials to extract mail for your account. Once done, all of your emails get displayed in the Thunderbird application. Creating backups is crucial for safeguarding data and system configurations. Here is a general guide on creating backups on Debian 12 Bookworm. There are various methods named rsync, timeshift, and deja dupe, and you can choose the one that suits your preferences and requirements. However, we are going to use the deja dupe. For deja dupe, start by updating the installed repositories in the system using the sudo apt update. Then, Execute the sudo apt install deja dup command to install the deja dupe software. After the completion of the installation process, open the deja dupe software from the application menu and configure the settings. As a configuration, set up the backup location and schedule the time after which the backup should be performed automatically. Then, choose the folder you want to include or exclude for backup. Once the configuration is done, Hit the Backup Now button to start the backup process. Remember to store your backups in a secure location and periodically test the restoration process to ensure your backups are functional. Adjust the backup frequency based on how often your data changes. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.